So over the weekend, we hit 5,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And while 5,000 may not seem like a lot to some people, I feel like 5,000 is huge for me. And I'm just like, man, 5,000 people are like, hey girl, we wanna see what you're talking about. So I asked underneath my community tab and gave you guys the option to go ahead and hit me with like an ask me anything. And some of you all ask questions. So we're gonna sit down and have some coffee while I answer the questions. So welcome to my channel. This is Aronica from Aronica B. Cole where we talk about plus size sewing. This morning we'll be talking a little bit about coffee as well as my sewing journey. So stay tuned. Before we jump into the video, I do just want to say thank you so very much for subscribing to my channel. I have been a blogger since my early 2000s and I started my channel like way back when and I never wanted to build a channel on YouTube because I was like, oh my God, it's so much work. You always have to look perfect on the camera, video editing, things like that. As we can see, I don't show up looking perfect and um, I love that for me because I love that my audience, you all are still like, no, we're subscribed. Please give us the fresh bed head, the messy look. We're here for it. So thank you all for making it, making me feel like it's okay to just show up as myself and still be able to grow. I am so appreciative to you all for that. I do have my phone in my hand because also like shout out to like the dopeness of this case. It's an iridescent case because iridescent is like my favorite color, but also like it has like this little stand thing that I can use. I digress, but either way, I'll be looking down at my phone. I don't want y'all being like, where is she looking at? Looking down at my phone to make sure that I answer any of the questions that came up. I did um, pop into my community tab and offer people the ability to just ask me any questions. Um, a lot of people... And I say a lot loosely, but people congratulated me. So thank you so much for those congratulations. And there were a couple of questions. So without further ado, let's get into the questions, but not before we look at how cute this mug is. It says spill the tea. So props for this morning, right? <laughs> mm. Okay. So let's start off with the first question of, um, how did your garment sewing journey begin? And this was submitted by Kimberly Wiley. So thank you so much for this question. You know, what's so funny is that I love the specificity of this question because my journey in sewing began when I was like six, seven, and I was hand sewing these little dolls. But my journey in garment sewing actually was much later than that. And it wasn't until I actually had my oldest child. So um, my oldest and I we were just a mom daughter trio duo with my bestie and her daughter. Um, in fact, actually, so my oldest daughter, I had her, um, and I was a single mom. And when I had her, I moved in with my best friend, Terry and her daughter, Isla and Isla became my bonus baby and Kalima became Terry's bonus baby. And so we raised our daughters together for three years and it was fantastic. I loved it. Such a fantastic experience. If you are a single mom and you know another single mom who has a parenting um, perspective that you respect, I highly recommend this sort of situation for you because it was really something that benefited both of us. But my daughter... So listen, I made like no money and my daughter was growing and I was just like, I don't know if I can really afford new clothes. So I would, um, I would just go ahead and thrift her clothes or I would take her old clothes and upcycle them with my sewing machine. Right. So like she was like a little bean pole and she still kind of is a bean pole. And like she was in probably about a size 12 months until she was like two because of how small she was. And I would just upcycle those things. And then when I met my husband and we got pregnant with our second child, I really got more into upcycling like my thrift finds into maternity wear. And then after I had my second child, I did go ahead and really embrace garment sewing. Now, I didn't know how to read patterns. So that was the thing. Like, and when I was probably about 24, I tried to make a, I made a like New Year's dress and y'all, I still did not know how to read a pattern. So literally I did a zipper install. It was strapless. If I can find a picture of it, I'm gonna put it right here. And it somehow stayed on all night. And that was when I learned that God was real and that I had guardian angels that obviously made it so that I was not showing the sun, the moon, and the stars as I brought in the new year. But I didn't know how to read a pattern. 
So then um, after I had my daughter, my second daughter, I should say, is when I really started to learn about patterns, how to read patterns, about different fabrics, about how all fabrics cannot be used for all patterns. Yeah, the amount of fabric that I tried to make knit pants out of with, or I tried to use a knit pattern with woven fabrics mind blowing. But it wasn't until like really my mid twenties that I really started sewing garments, um, and sewing them, um, with proficiency. Maybe it was my thirties. Yeah, it was my thirties. Yeah. Excuse me. Definitely my thirties because I had my middle child when I was, um, 31. So yeah, I uh, started to read patterns when I was in my 30s and that's when I really started to pick up garment sewing really consistently and the having the creation of new garments. So um, yeah, that is how it started is, so it started in my 30s and the reason why I started doing it is because after I had my second child, I just could not lose the baby weight. Um, I was like literally stuffing myself into my pre-pregnancy clothes because I had such a, a fast snapback after I had my oldest. And I had my oldest when I was 26. By the time that I walked out of the hospital from having her, my pre-pregnancy clothes were too big, right? And so I thought that because that was the situation with my oldest, that that was how I was going to do my subsequent children. And that is not what happened. So because I couldn't fit into clothes and at the time, um, those, the MLM leggings were really big. What are they? LuLaRoe leggings. So I was like, I can just make these. And so I was like, I'll do it myself. But yeah, it, I started sewing my own garments because I simply could not fit my current clothes. And I was like, as opposed to paying all of this money for clothes that I don't necessarily love or taking all the time to go thrifting to find something I do love. I would much rather learn a skill set that I felt like could take me to like having a love affair with fashion, fashion and making and like really dressing the body that I have versus the body that I wanted, if that makes sense. Um, the next question is, if you grew up disliking your body, what was your process to switching to dislike to loving? I'm still struggling with that. And in truth, I actually feel like I struggle with that some days as well, right? Like when we think about like this self-love journey um, or like loving our bodies, we, we think of it as an end destination and it's not right. It's literally a journey. And just like if you're training for like a half marathon or a marathon, right? There are going to be those days where training is easy, right? Where you get up, you run three miles. If you're not a runner. So I used to be a runner. I'm not a runner anymore. I might go back to running. I don't know. We'll see what my joints have to say about it. But you know, when you just make the decision to train for something, anything, you have to get up and actually make that conscious decision to do it, right? So for example, when I was training for my half marathon, like I had to get up and even though I didn't have childcare because this is the time when I was a single mom, like there were moments where I was like, I was committed to that journey and I would do whatever I had to take, right? So I remember one morning I didn't have care for my daughter and I ran nine miles pushing a jogging stroller, right? And it was the hardest nine miles of my life, but I did it because I was committed to it. So same thing is with your self-love journey, right? You have to be committed and you have to kind of follow through with whatever, whatever you've got to do in that moment to show up for yourself, right? A lot of times I think that we find it easier to show up for people who are outside of ourselves. Like if we have a nine to five, we're gonna make sure that we get there on time. We're gonna make sure that we leave on time. We're gonna you know, apply ourselves during that time. But when it comes time for showing up for ourselves, we tend to flake off and be like, eh. Like today I'm not going to make the choice that makes me feel good about myself tomorrow's another day, right? But if you think about it in terms of how you show up for other people, and if you just show up for yourself the same way, you know, that journey is going to look a little bit different. So I did grow up with a, a love hate relationship with my body, right? Because um, I love being shaped like a black woman, right? And so when I say that, most people know what I mean. Like I love being thick, like I've never wanted to be skinny, right? Like I love having thick thighs. I love having a big butt. I love having a smaller waist. Like I love that, right? And I've always loved having that shape. So growing up, for me, it was more about my ankles because I have cankles. And when you are a kid who has cankles, you get teased 
Like there is no other. And that really was hard for me because I didn't understand that I have cankles not because I'm bigger. I have cankles because of my bone structure and I have cankles because of my body type. There was a point in time where I was in like sixth grade where I was anorexic and I was popping diet pills because I just wanted smaller ankles. That was it. Um, but I think that even now it's hard for me and I don't ever want to say like, oh yeah, I've achieved like... Own when it comes to, you know, accepting and loving my body, because um, while my favorite thing to make are dresses and skirts, they are not my favorite things to wear, namely because they show my ankles and I am still falling in love with that part of my body. But I do feel like um, just because I don't always like my body. I always love my body. And even though I don't always like some of the health decisions that I make, I always love myself and give myself another opportunity to do right by myself. Um, and the reason why I say it that way is because we give everyone else around us second chances. We give them the opportunity to grow and stuff like that. And we tend to not give ourselves the same thing. So what I will say is that, um, one, give yourself some more grace. Um, to understand that there is a difference between um, liking your body and loving your body and that your body always deserves your love because it's helped you to show up in the way that you have. Like, for example, when I was uh, in my practice marriage, I was told I couldn't have kids. And now my body has gifted me three three children who came out perfectly healthy, you know. So I can't help but love that my body um, showed up for me when I needed it to, you know, but like I was jumping on my trampoline and I was, you know, doing the rebound and I was working out. Your girl was getting sweaty, you know, and I don't know what happened, but like my knee and ankle have been in shambles since. Right. And I'm just like, come on body. Like we got to work together. So I do think that giving your body that grace and, um, believing in yourself, right. Um, if you're like, I just want to be smaller or I want to be healthier, or I want to be fit. Right. Um, you've got to set those habits for the person who you want to be, but the first habit is always going to be loving who you are. And it, despite what size you are, your body always deserves your love, you know, and you deserve that love as well. So I think that, um, people think that there's a magic switch that you just flip and it's not, it's just a decision that you make every single day. Right. Just like, um, in my marriage, right. Like I'm very happily married. Um, I wake up and I make the decision to love my, my, my husband though, the same way that I consciously make that decision to love him. I consciously make that decision to love myself. It's not a switch. When I wake up, it is, I'm going to love myself today, which means I'm going to make wiser choices for myself today. So like for breakfast, I had, um, two fried eggs, right? Um, fried in olive oil, not butter. Right. So I think that, um, Knowing what makes you feel good about yourself and making those choices every day makes a huge difference in how you show up for yourself and how you feel about yourself. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Okay. Um, another question is, where do you find fashion fabrics that is not Joanne's mood or Amazon? Knit or woven, solids or prints. I feel like I can find a million solid cottons and linens, but... Patterns I would see in a store or in ready-made clothes I can't find. I don't have a fabric district I can go to for dead stock. So Becca, I buy most of my fabrics online. But also I live in Atlanta where I've got Gail K fabrics. I've got fine fabrics. Um, and so here's the thing about seeing this. And there's a lot of answers to this. So let me address the um, idea of finding like the different patterns and the different things that you find on like ready to wear clothes. You have to understand that those things are normally custom printed. So if you're like, I would actually like to have something that is more custom printed or a different type of pattern, right? Raspberry Creek Fabrics does custom printing. Um, Spoonflower does custom printing. There's, a, there's another one that I'm thinking of that's US based that does custom printing as well. And I can't think about it right now. But oh, I think it's my... My custom fabrics does custom custom fabric printing. So that is an idea as well. Now I will say that custom fabric printing is going to cost a little bit more, obviously. But if you're like, I want something that is closer to these ready to wear, like patterns and things like that that I'm seeing, custom printing might be 
more your more your jam or designing something or seeing something that's on these websites might be a better fit for you, right? Um, but if you're like, <clears throat> I just kind of want like something that is not at, now I will say, yeah, listen, don't sleep on mood. Okay. Some of my favorite fabrics have come from the mood clearance section. Like I'm not going to lie. Your girl loves mood, but I'm not paying full price. I'm not, I'm going to go underneath that clearance section and we're going to make that pop. Okay. But depending upon where you are, how much you're willing to pay for shipping, that sort of thing, things will change, right? And of course I've done a couple, I've done, I think at least one video that was on like where to buy fabrics online. It got a lot of traction because I referenced Joanne going out, going uh, bankrupt. I didn't say they were going out of business, y'all. I just said they were going bankrupt, all right? But um, for quality like patterned fabrics, I like Millie May fabrics. Um, I really like, um, one of the places that I will get a lot of fabrics from is called Freckled Fabrics and it's a group that is on Facebook. I actually don't even know if they're still around because I stopped, I, get, I put myself on a fabric timeout, right? Because I was like, you gotta slow down, slow your roll, right? Um, but Freckled Fabrics, she would actually go into the um, district and just buy a couple of cuts of things and um, that sort of thing. I also really love, um boho fabrics so boho fabrics is owned by my friend emily pritz and her fabrics fan freaking tastic i love the prints that she has she has a wide variety of both uh knits as well as woven fabrics and good quality i also really love surge fabrics surge fabrics has things like um stretch linen which i didn't even know was a thing um that is my jam i love that um if you are looking for, so one of the other, I, I'm in my solids phase, obviously, like I've got on all black today, but I love uh, Fabric Wholesale Direct, um, FWD, and I love them because they do have like pattern fabrics, but they're like solids fabrics, like you can get so we know that like the Panatone color of the year is like a peach color. So like if you're like, hey, I want to do a solid peach or a monochromatic peach outfit, you can get the peach color in all different fabrics, like from scuba to your uh, crepe de chine. You can get it in all like everything tool. And I love that you can buy it in so many different fabric types so that you can have different textures within that monochromatic look. They do also have prints as well. Um, let's see. I actually don't really buy a whole lot of fabric off of Amazon. And I say that because even though I bought my fabric for frocktails off of Amazon, but I don't typically actually buy off of Amazon. I miss when, um, fabric.com was a thing. Y'all, I miss that so much, so much, but yeah. Um, Hmm. I'm trying to think about where else I shop mainly those places if I'm not show up shopping locally. Um, but like I have fabrics that I've designed and listed on Spoonflower simply because I wanted that fabric, right? So I think that um, being able to step outside of even your design box and maybe design fabrics that you wanna see, you know, that could also be a thing. But I also, so I actually find that I love more of the, more of the patterns that are more like European based. So like Minerva.com, I love their fabrics up there because they have more of the atliers, you know, they've got, there's a thousand different pattern design. I mean, like fabric designers with atlier as their, 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 their name. Um, I also like, let me tell y'all something. If the owner of fabric godmother were to reach out and be like, Hey girl, can I please send you fabric consistently? And you create, when I tell you that I would be like, hands down, yes, please. Because the prints options that she has there so good. So good. Um, I love it because again, like I said, more European, but she's UK based. So if you're like, Hey, I don't necessarily mind paying for shipping and doing a larger order. So you feel like it's worth it. Definitely Minerva.com as well as, um, as well as what is it? I just said fa fabric godmother. And then there's an Australian based fabric company that my friend, uh, Romy uses, um, so like a sloth, um, 
her like there and I will figure out I'll find out the name and I'll make sure I put it in the caption but that one has such bright colors and is just so fun I really love them as well um let's see and then following up that question was could you do a program about how to identify a fabric from ready to wear what names would we put in the search engine are there any tests we could do on the fabric at home to help identify it, perhaps a, a certain pattern to weave, to the weave, et cetera. What I will say is that like, so for example, this rub that I have, actually everything that I have on right now is ready to wear, right? Um, <clears throat> the easiest thing to do literally is to just look at the label. Literally look at the label and put that into your search engine. That's how I found out some of my favorite fabrics, right? So like, for example, this is a robe, let's see. I should just take it off, but I have it attached to my mic. We'll just take it off. We'll take off the mic too. And we'll put, we'll, we'll put it back on. Okay. So let's see. This robe, hands down one of my favorite fabrics. The pants match it, but the pants, they have a little bit of sheer mesh. You know, we don't want to show too much on YouTube. But okay, so let's see. This fabric is 5% elastane. We do have a little bit of lace on the back and it's 86% nylon. So this is essentially just all stretch, right? <laughs> essentially, but the blend of it. So 5% and 86%, like if I look for an 86% elastane fabric, that sort of thing, I can put that into Google and it will pull up some fabrics for me. So I will say that you can absolutely do that if you're looking for, or if you have fabrics and I will say that the more fabrics that you come in contact with and the more fabrics that you have the opportunity to like touch and feel as you purchase it or like as you step outside, I don't know where my other arm went. Okay, it's fine. We're, we're just showing shoulders now. Um, I feel like you become more familiar with the different types of fabrics, right? So for example, like when I first started out with my fabric journey, different from my sewing journey. Okay, friends, because listen, we all know that fabric loving is a completely different hobby than sewing. Yes, related, but different. But I didn't know anything, right? Like I know that I prefer a natural base fiber. I know that I love bamboo. Bamboo knits are like my favorite. Um, why? Because they're so breathable. Um, at some point in time, they were considered more sustainable, Every time I say that, some people are like, yes, it is. Some people are like, no, it's not. And here's an article that disproves that. But I will say that I love the way that bamboo fabric feels on my skin. Um, but I didn't know what it was until I looked in labels or until I bought it and was like, oh, this is what that bamboo fabric feels like. You know, I don't recommend doing it that way because I do feel like you can end up with a lot of fabric waste or a lot of fabrics that you have to de-stash like I have in my garage because I thought that like when Liverpool became big a couple years ago by a couple, I mean like 10 years ago, I bought all this Liverpool fabric and I don't like the way that feels on my skin at all. So now I've got a bunch of Liverpool to de-stash, right? But I will say that starting out by feeling fabrics at stores and that are ready to wear, I have a note that I keep in my phone. I'm an Apple user. And so I just keep a note of just like fabrics that I liked and like what, what garment I touched that they had used it for, what they said in the label as far as that percentage. And then I literally just look it up and see what I can find that's close to it, you know? Um, but I can absolutely do... Um, I actually have spoken to many, many people and done, um, speeches. I don't want to say speeches because I feel like they were more interactive than a speech, right? About different fabrics. So that's absolutely something that I can do. So, um, that was like the final question. And with that, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. And if there is other content that you want to see, please, please, please drop me a message or drop a comment so that I can make sure that I'm creating the content that you want to see. And until next time, thank you so much and happy sewing. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what else we create together.